What is going on guys? Welcome back to the episode. Me and Bobby today are out here at the river trying to do some gar and bowfin fishing. It's so one thing you want to know about bowfin and gar when you're going to try to fish for them at this time. Like bass have their pre-spawn conditions right now. Oh my. I think that was a gar right behind. I don't know if they can see that. That was a big one. Like so the bass right now are kind of in the transition of early spring. They're coming up to the banks. It's pre-spawn conditions. You guys just saw the video that I just posted. Gar and bowfin kind of have that same exact thing, but they do it in different times. So bowfin try to spawn a, a, around April, late June. They spawn at night. They, they don't really make a bed. They just lay their eggs and the babies hatch behind them and they just follow in a big group. So right now it's pre-spawn for the bass. The bowfin are kind of right behind them too, but bowfin are just on a different category and so are the gar. All these fish right here, they need warm water to thrive. Y'all can see above us right now is one of the hottest days we've had. I don't know why I'm wearing this because it it's pretty hot out here and it's going to get even hotter. Wasn't it get like 74 today? Yep, 74, 75. So that's the game plan, y'all. We have good conditions today. It's just it's one of those moods where I'm just out here trying to catch some fish with Bobby. What's your biggest bowfin? Do you even know? Yeah, my biggest bowfin was about 10 pounds. Was it with me? Yeah. Was it here? Mm -hmm. I can't remember anything. I mean, yeah, your biggest gar was, it was here with me too. Yeah. Well, anything can happen. Y'all have seen this at the spot where I popped my six foot gar. This is a spot where I've popped my 12 pound bowfin. There's some giants in there. There's a bunch of species in this little river right here that you wouldn't even think are thriving. Like I said, there's a transition between those two right now. So we're going to see how these bowfin and gar are going to want to act today. If we can catch a gar, that would be a little special addition because they're, they're in here, but they're just a little bit harder to catch. The whole goal is to try to catch them bowfin and some gar today. So hopefully we can knock that out. I'm going to show you guys the gear I have. I only have one rod with me. Bobby has one rod too. It doesn't take much to come out here and target these species. I'm gonna show y'all the bait, the line, the, everything we have set up to try to make this day possible. So I think that's enough talking. Let's get the fishing. You ready, man? Let's do it. All right, guys, we're about to get the fishing. I'm just gonna explain to you real quick what the gear, what the setup I have today. One thing about bowfin, like I said, as I go every single time, I always learn something. I always try to take something back from the last time I came. One thing about bowfin, if the fish is big enough and gar, if they're big enough, they're gonna fight. They're gonna dig, they're gonna try to go to any type of structure. They're very smart fish. They're gonna try to break you off. It's like a bass with them while they jump. So both of them have this thing where when you hook them, they just like to spin the leg to roll. If they're not digging, trying to pull you towards any type of structure, they come up to the top of the surface and they're just gonna spin and roll. And I've actually broke off on a lot of fish doing that. As they start to roll, it just wraps a line around them and then just from the tension of you pulling on them and them spinning 100 miles an hour, it just breaks and you lose the fish. So now that fish goes back into the water, it's got a hook in his mouth and you probably spooked him, he's not gonna bite again today. So every single time I come out here, I always respool my reel. It's a 17 pound mono. It's gonna be enough to where you have to set the hook pretty aggressive towards these fish. Their mouths are full of teeth and bone and gar or even worse, they don't have any meat in their mouth. If you're gonna catch a guard, he's probably gonna swallow the hook. But for both, and if you do jack him hard enough, you will get the hook through them. I'm throwing a size two hook. I normally have a little bit of a leader tied up, y'all. I have a swivel all the way to the thicker mono to my actual hook. Just because it's, it was spring's coming up, this water's still pretty cold, but these fish might be active. Like I said, we just have to get into the water to see what they want to do. They might be sitting by structure. They might be out in the open one eat. So we gotta find out what we're doing. We're gonna be throwing gizzard shad today for bait. Stuff stinks really bad and stays on the hook pretty good. Not fresh, it's frozen, but these fish really don't care. Let's get bait up and let's hit the water. So we got our gizzard shad right here. Cut off a little chunk, you don't need much. These fish are not greedy. They'll take anything they get their mouths on. And you're hooking this bait, y'all. Because it's not a wide gap hook, you just want the tip of your barb barely sticking out just like that. You don't want to dig that hook too far into that meat because when these bowfin grab it, they hit it with such aggression. They throw it right in the back of their throat. It's really hard to get this hook to rotate and get a good hook in there i just leave it exposed just a little bit so in the beginning we actually had i think it was a both and come up i don't know if he was grabbing air or if he was actually trying to eat something there was some activity in this location right here i know for sure that most of our fish are probably going to be in this pocket right here y'all can see there's a small lay down right there and most of the time they don't want to eat out in the middle we have to skip underneath that tree to try to get a reaction strike really just want to find out where these fish are posted at because both are so aggressive they're always searching for food and so are gar there's not much you have to do i literally just cast my bait out there let it sink as the current's flowing the bait down if there's a both in the air or a gar, they're going to be watching that bait and they'll swim up to it and grab it. That was a small gar right there. I'll let the bait sit in one spot for maybe three minutes and I'll just pick it up, let it sink back down to the bottom. Just fan cast in my area, you want to cover as much ground as possible. First, we got to find out what these bowfin and gar are wanting to do today. That was a bowfin right there. Because he just grabbed some air, I'm gonna put it right on his head. If he's hungry, he should hear that bait hit the water. He should spin around and try to come towards it. Oh. All right, we got one taking it. Y'all can see how fast my line's running now. That might be a bowfin, could be a gar. The bait was sitting still. Went to go pull up on it. I just felt the slightest weight. As soon as I felt him, he felt me and started taking off. I don't want him to choke it too bad, so we're going to go for it here in a second. God, I film he's right there. We're going to go for it, y'all. There he is. That's a pretty good bowfin, dude. 
That is not a bad size. Y'all hear that drag? Yeah, go ahead and grab that net. Once you got him hooked, y'all don't strain the fish too much. Just let him do his thing. He'll rip drag here in a second. He's acting like he's done, but he's not. That's a pretty big one, dude. Look at him. There he goes again. Bring him to the net. And he's up. That's a nice one. That's a big one, dude. That's a big one. I'm not seeing him. That's a big bowfin, man. He's big. Look at his head. That's a 10, man. He's he, he's kind of, he's not that long, but he's wide. Oh, the hook just came out. All right, y'all, so the hook's out, so that's a good sign. Now we just got to grab him and not make him too mad. We're going to grab the scale, see how much this fish is weighing. 10.53, 10.49. All right, y'all, there's the first bowfin, 10.49. That is a giant. I didn't think it was this big coming out the water. Look at the size of this fish. She's a giant. This is her mouth and head. This fish really isn't that long, but she is super thick and super wide. I'm shaking, trying to hold her. She's a giant. Let's put her back in the net. You can get some water, then we're gonna take some pictures. All right, guys, the fish is back in the net. I'm just gonna dip her in the water. Maybe she's good. I think she's fine. These fish are pretty hardy. They can live out the water for a long time. I just wanna make sure she was okay. All right, y'all, we got our pictures. This is a beautiful fish right here. 1049, she's a giant. Let's put her back in the water so we can catch her again. Try not to fall in the water. I'm trying to place her in. Yes, sir. All right, y'all, Bobby, someone has a bite right now. I was gonna talk with my fish really quick too. I just released her, but we might have a gar on. We're just letting him take the line right now because gar is so hard to get the hook set into him. So here in about a couple seconds, Bobby, I think you should go for it, man. Here we go. Got him? Ah, uh, so Bobby just missed that fish. We think it was a gar. Gar is super hard to set the hook in. Probably gonna happen to me today. We just popped our first bowfin at 1049. I want y'all to realize something. That is not a small fish. Bowfin, there's a lot of small ones in this little body of water. Any bowfin that's pushing over seven pounds is a giant. So to catch one like that on my first fish is awesome, y'all. Hopefully they're biting today. I'm explaining to you guys how I got the fish to bite. So we get baited back up because I kind of think I'm on a pattern right now. I think I, I think I know what they're doing. So let's get back out there. Now, if y'all enjoy gar and bowfin fishing, the one thing I can say this goes for bass fishing too. It really stands out for both because they have just they have a lot of teeth. Every single time you catch a bowfin or a gar, just make sure you don't have any phrase in your line. Thankfully, I do not. I just checked it. Do not want to set the hook and it can be a giant and it snaps off just because the last fish fred your line that bad. Always make sure of that. Rub your hands on it. If you're around your knot, make sure you're not going to swivel around. Make sure there's no phrase in it. We're sitting pretty good right now. But for sure, my next fish, I promise you, I will cut this off to make sure I got a fresh knot and some fresh line right behind it. Let's get baited back up. So y'all can see this is the size bait I'm using. I'm not really using nothing too big. Could throw a bigger piece but just in case there's a chance of us getting a gar today i want to keep it in the size to where i know the bowfin won't even think twice to grab it and it's not too big so if a gar does he has time to swallow it so i'm letting bobby work the area over there right now i'm gonna jump over here guys i'm gonna come over to this tree over here put one right underneath it so what i come to figure out guys bowfin and any types of fish that are always on the move looking for food i pretty much just said it they're on the move looking they're gonna be lurking the banks cruising the bottom looking for food so when you move that bait too much sometimes you can actually throw those fish off so what i'm doing i'm just letting that bait sit there like i said the current's moving my bait off so it's all about keeping it as natural as you possibly can. Got him? Yep. You do? Get him, Bobby. Get her in the net. Where's she going? And she's up. Yes, sir. She's like gold. You see that? Uh -huh. All right, y'all. Bobby just released his bow fin. It's a beautiful fish. Super gold. Let's get back out there. You got one? What is it? It's a gar? Dude, that's a little guy. Oh, I think you foul hooked him. That's what she did. Hey, got <laughs> he's up. <laughs> you foul. Dude, look how little that little guy is. And he's off. That's Bobby's gar, y'all. Little baby. All right, y'all. The bite has slowed down. And as I say, that one hits right behind me. We'll see here in a second. Yep, she slowed down. I don't know what that was. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move locations now. I'm gonna put a fresh piece of bait on, get some scent out there, see what we can do. All right, guys, current update. It has been rough probably for the last hour and a half, two hours. We have had no bites. I don't know what these bowfin are doing right now. The gar's still busting around, but the bowfin are not. Sometimes just casting over and over again, you kind of spook the fish. They just kind of don't want to eat anymore. The tactic we're doing now is just casting out, letting a rod sit there, and hopefully one grabs it. So we're gonna keep on doing that and see if we can pull one out. 
Y'all, it's getting tough. It really is. I've knocked my piece of bait down to a small little cube. These guard giving me the smallest little taps. Hopefully a bowfin will come by. We're just chilling. We're waiting. All right, y'all. Another one's taking it. It's probably a 10-10. See what we can do. Come on, give me. Come on, baby. Stay pinned. That feels good. It's a gore. No, it might be a bowfin. It is a bowfin. Stay on there. Let her do her thing. I'll bring her around to you. Here she comes. Coming in hot. Wrong way. There we go. It has been rough, guys. I'm talking rough. Smallest little bite ever. Right? You never thought that would have been a bow fin. But we got her. All right, y'all. Scale is zeroed out. We got 445. All right, y'all. 445. About two and a half hours later. It has been rough, but I finally got my hands on one of these. Thought it was a guard the way it bit, but it was just a beautiful bowfin. Nice little four pound. Let's put her back in the water. I'm gonna jump down here. You just kind of stay where you can. Whoa! Whoa! Recording. <laughs> Whoopsie! <laughs> nice. What'd you do to get the good release? All right, y'all. Just busted my tail, and there, there goes there the fish. There you go. Tried softly, and that didn't go as planned. <laughs> All right, guys, I think the day is coming to an end. We caught four fish total. I caught two bowfin. I have over 14 pounds worth of fish. Bobby caught a little baby gar and a bowfin, and we really never get to see gar that little. It's extremely hard to hook. I mean, y'all saw it in the video today. The video started off good. We came out of here. I caught a 10-pound bowfin. They were biting really good. They were surfacing really fast. And I think they got a little bit picky because, I mean, what they're living in right now, guys, is it's a small river. It's a river that as soon as we cast that bait out, it slaps, and we're skipping, and all the commotion, those fish know what's going on. O over time, we were out here for about two hours doing the same exact thing, just trying to find those fish. The bite kind of shut off, and they're not stupid. These both in their guard, they're very smart. That's why I got the tactic. You know what? I'm going to sit down for a little bit. I'm going to let the water calm down. I'm just going to throw my bait out into the water. Use the same tactic like I talked about in the beginning, letting the current just kind of take it down. So I cast it out, put it in a good spot. Took my bail, just leave some open line out, and I would just wash the small little taps, and I didn't expect that last bowfin. I was really just trying to aim for a gar. I put on a small piece of bait. Hope we wind up catching a bowfin. They're not stupid fish. They know what's going on over time, so you just have to sit there and think about how you can kind of hit them with a different strategy like we did today. So it wasn't a bad day, but we've been out here for probably about close to, what do you think, Bobby, four hours? It, it, it's been a long day. So we're going to wrap it up right here, guys. If y'all want to watch any of these videos, just click on one right here. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I'll catch you next time, guys. Lit Bass TV.